Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West, the tamed and the untamed. From the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat, these are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for. Teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! Chad Remington's the name. Chad Remington from Dos Rios in the Rocky Mountain country. Where I'm sort of, well, I guess you'd call me a frontier town lawyer. Strange things happen out on the frontier, and as a result, strange things happen to me. Mighty strange things. But the frontier being what it is, always changing and always moving, and with the people who drift into it and across it, we've got just about as much law as well, as the law allows. To show you what I mean, let's take what seemed to be a pretty cut and dried case that was brought to me just a matter of a few weeks ago. And I guess the best way to tell you about it is to tell you what happened, or what I suppose happened before they sent for me. Now, it all took place in the town of Rock Springs, oh, about 40, 50 miles from Dos Rios, and concerned a cattle rancher by the name of Oliver Baldwin, and his daughter, Dixie. By criminy, Dixie, you're just wasting your breath arguing with me. I know what I'm doing. And I'm telling you that I'm going down to Della Andy's store and tell him off proper. But, Daddy, maybe you did make a mistake when you wrote that deed out for him. Maybe you just thought you wrote it out for 300 acres. You might have put an extra zero on it without realizing it. The only mistake I made was in dealing with that unprincipled, no-good varmint in the first place. I know what I wrote in that deed, and it was just 300 acres and not 3,000. Well, if you're positive he changed the 300 to 3,000, you still shouldn't take the law into your own hands. Who said anything about taking the law into my own hands? I'm just going down to Della Andy's store and give him 24 hours to change that deed back to 300 acres or suffer the consequences. And while I'm in town, I'm sending a telegram over to Dos Rios to that lawyer over there. Chad Remington. Well, that's a relief. Because if Delahanty's going to try any crooked stuff on me, I'm a getting a lawyer and throwing him and his whole kit and caboodle right smack into jail. Well, Oliver Baldwin was as good as his word. He hitched a team to his buckboard and drove from the two bar S into Rock Springs to call on Cy Delahanty at the little store Delahanty had recently opened in the town. And while he was on the trail to Rock Springs, Oliver Baldwin was the subject of a conversation Delahanty was having with his assistant, Prod Stevens. Look, Mr. Delahanty, I know I work for you, but you ain't been in Rock Springs long enough to know about these things. And, and I'm telling you, Oliver Baldwin is a regular catamount when he gets riled. You don't say so, Prod. The old gentleman looks so gentle. You think butter wouldn't melt in his oh, oh, mouth? Oh, 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 talk about the devil. Here comes Baldwin now. Let me handle him. Morning, Oliver. Don't you go Oliver and me, Delahanty. Now, now, don't tell me just because you made a perfectly understandable mistake in filling out my deed that you're going to hold it against me. Delahanty, I know you ain't been out west long enough to understand us, folks, but them smooth city ways yours don't go out here. We got our own way of handling crooks. Prod, I think you better show the gentleman to the door. And uh, don't be too polite about it. Yeah, all right. Well, come on, Mr. You lay a hand on, on me now. and I'll you show... You numbskull, let that gun alone! I... You... Let go of that gun or I'll... 
Mr. Baldwin, you pulled a gun, acted like a complete nitwit, and ruined a $200 mirror. Now get out before I lose my temper completely. If that gunslinger of yours didn't have my 45, I'd show you. But I'm a getting a lawyer down here, Delahanty, and when he comes, you'll be lucky if you just end up in jail. So, he's sending for help, is he? Well, the only kind of help he's going to need is the help of six pallbearers. Prod. Yeah, boss? Get that rifle out of the back room. You and I are riding out on the trail, making sure that Mr. Baldwin never gets back home. Well, Oliver Baldwin stopped long enough in Rock Springs before heading home to send me a telegram. So enlisting the company and assistance of Cherokee O'Bannon, the ex-medicine man who now owns the Dos Rios livery stable, we lost no time in setting out for Rock Springs and plowing up the dust to the Two Bar S Ranch House. This is quite an establishment Mr. Baldwin has over here, Chan. Yep, and from all appearances, Oliver Baldwin seems to be one of the few really prosperous ranches. You suppose he might be able to pay you a sizable fee, Counselor? <laughs> what do you call a sizable fee? Ten dollars for me and ten quarts of whiskey for you? <laughs> oh, Sizable fee should be 20. Dollars. Oh, quartz. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, I'm Chad Remington, and this is Mr. O'Bannon. Is Mr. Baldwin home? Come in, won't you? I, I'm Dixie Baldwin. My father was, was dry gulched last night. He was dry gulched. Oh. Who was the unprincipled culprit who dared to... Hold it, Cherokee. This is no time to ask questions. If Miss Dixie feels like talking, she'll tell us all it's necessary to know. Oh, what is it, I tell you? I knew before my father left for town that he'd never come back. Why do you say that? Because he went in to see Cy Delahanty with blood in his eye. Cy Delahanty? Who's he? A double-crossing, sheep-stealing Jasper who just opened a store in town. Oh, I know I can't prove it, but I'm positive that Delahanty did it. Why do you say that, miss? Had he threatened your father? I don't know. But Daddy threatened him plenty. You see, Delahanty moved to Rock Springs from Springfield a few months ago. He opened a store and then started looking around for some ranch land he could buy. Well, that explains part of your father's telegram about a forged deed. He sold Delahanty 300 acres. When the deed was filed, it read 3,000. I see. But you said your father was dry gulched. And if he went to the Delahanty store to threaten him, he... Of course. You didn't think Delahanty would do what he did in his own store, do you? Well, with, with that kind, they just wait. Shall I open the door for you, Miss Dixie? Well, yes, if you... Well... I recognize his rig outside. That must be Delahanty at the door now. Now, wait a minute, Miss Dixie. I think Cherokee and I had better go into the kitchen while he's here. You mean you don't want to meet Delahanty? No, I don't. Not just yet. Well, you're going to be a fine lot of help, you are. Now, wait a minute. I only want to... Uh, you'd better let him in. I'll explain my reasons to you later. All right, come on, Cherokee. Good afternoon, Miss Baldwin. May I come in? Yes, as long as you're here. I, uh, I heard about your father. Not really. A week ago, I'd have felt sorry for your father and for you. But since he made his attitude very apparent yesterday, I'll just make this a business call. Save myself the trouble of coming to see you again. And save me the trouble of seeing you again. Your father told you he sold me only 300 acres, didn't he? That's all he did sell you. Fortunately, that part is past argument. When he came in to see me yesterday, he asked me to promise that I wouldn't tell you about this. Here. A bill of sale for 100 head of cattle. A bill of sale for 100 head of cattle. 
You didn't think I was going to buy 3,000 acres of land and raise jackrabbits on it, did you? I bought a ranch from your father. A ranch with cattle on it. You... You... Mr. Delahanty, I want to tell you something I'm sure you already know. This is nothing but forgery. You copied my father's signature from the original deed. How very, very clever of me. <laughs> of course, you can prove that statement. Huh? I'm giving you three to get out of here. No sense in reaching for that rifle, young lady. Now that I've told you the facts, I'm going. But I'll be back Monday to take over my 3,000 acres and the cattle along with it. Good day, Miss Baldwin. And don't expect me at your father's funeral. Mr. Remington! Ah, there's a fine, high-class gentleman. Miss Dixie, do you believe your father did sell him the cattle? For $1,100? I'm forced to agree with the young lady, Chad. So am I, Cherokee. But that doesn't mean a judge and 12 men on a jury would. Now, the first thing for us to do, if Miss Dixie feels up to it, is to ride into town and call on the sheriff. Dixie, guessing's one thing, proving's another. And how are you going to prove a thing like forgery when even you admit you couldn't tell if it's your father's signature or not? Well, if either of you think I'm going to be robbed of my ranch and my stock, you've certainly got another thing coming. Miss Dixie, the law is the law. Isn't that consoling? But if that is the law, then maybe I'd better make a few laws of my own. Now, Dixie... You're not going to get any place acting this way. As far as you're concerned, Mr. Remington, remember, I didn't ask you to come down here. And if my father had known as much about you as I do now, I don't think he would have either. We'll return to the second act of Branding the Badlands, our exciting frontier town adventure in just a few moments. And now, Frontier Town. Well, as I said before, a cut-and-dried case doesn't always turn out to be just that. And not only was it a back-breaking job trying to prove anything on Cy Delahanty, but Dixie Baldwin's sudden attitude of bitterness was making my task no easier. After Dixie's display of temper at the sheriff's office, the O'Bannon and I somewhat grimly, I admit, remounted our horses and rode back to the 2 Bar S ranch. When we got there, we found that Dixie, having seen us coming, had gone into her bedroom and bolted the door, leaving us with a bit of egg on our faces. <laughs> not much to do and a good deal to talk about. And you know, I'm not a man who likes propriety, but I want to go on record as saying Miss Baldwin is perhaps the most pig-headed filly I've ever seen. <laughs> and one of the most pulchritudinous, I might add... Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, fine lot of good her poker tooth is doing us while she's locked up in her room. And it has certain advantages at that, Chad. For example, since she is not out here to play hostess, I could look through the kitchen cupboards to see if I could locate any uh, uh, refreshments. Not on your tin type. This is one time you need a clear head. Counselor, my head is clear as a bell. Yes, and probably twice as empty. Of course. It's absolutely twice as... What, <coughs> what was that again? <laughs> look, old Benham. There's only one thing for us to do. We've got to induce Miss Dixie to come out and listen to reason. And there are no two ways about that. If I know women, and I do, she's not coming out. Dixie? Dixie, can you hear me? I want to talk to you. You're just wasting your breath, my boy. Doggone it, Dixie. Will you stop acting like a spoiled child and come out here? I'm certainly not coming out. 
And if you're even half a gentleman, you'll pack up and clear out of here. Now, your father telegraphed me to come out here, and, well, he needed some help. And if you... Fine lot of help, y'all. Unless you mean you want to help Delahanty. Why, you ungrateful little vixen. Now, you either open that door or someone's going to have to buy you a new one. You try breaking this door down and you're going to get a load of buckshot. All right. Now, Cherokee, that excess beef of yours is good for something. Come on, help me bust this door down. Only too glad to oblige, Counselor. All right. One. <laughs> two. Three. Two big, strong men, eh? Well, do you think you're big enough to swallow lead? Now, you wouldn't dare pull that trigger. Your bluff is just like your temper, all on the surface. And for your information, I'm not leaving Rock Springs yet. And for your information, I don't care what you do as long as you get out of my house. Fair enough. That's a bargain. All right, come on, Cherokee. We got a bit of riding to do and fast. <laughs> did have a bit of riding to do. We rode back to town and made tracks for Delahanty's general store, where we called on Mr. Delahanty himself in mighty short order. Yeah, and I've heard about you, Remington. And I've heard about you too, Delahanty. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't believe all I hear. Sorry, but what I heard about you, I've got to believe. A really smart man wouldn't. You talk as if I came here to make trouble for you. I didn't. So I'm putting all my cards on the table. Oliver Baldwin sent for me. When I got here, he was dead. And in my humble opinion, that daughter of Baldwin's is a double-dyed, self-willed little fool. Oh? Is she? Now, after talking to the sheriff, I'm... I'm sure of it. Now, look. Baldwin was supposed to pay me 500 for coming here. And it looks as if I'm not going to get it. So I thought maybe I could get part of it by making a deal with you. A deal, huh? Well, keep talking. Well, the sheriff says there's no question in his mind that you bought and paid for a hundred head of two bar as cattle. And since you're a merchant and not a cattleman, I'd like to make a deal to round up and brand that cattle for you. Wish I could believe you, Remington. <laughs> Why shouldn't you believe me? I own a ranch of my own, and I'm telling you that rounding up and branding takes an expert. Mm-hmm. Besides, if O'Bannon and I could do the job for you and collect $100, well, we'll at least have made expenses and not leave Rock Springs total losers. Good grief, man. What have you got to lose? Besides, you can ride along with us and make sure you're getting what you paid for. That's right at that. All right, boys, you can start the roundup and branding tomorrow morning. And uh, Prod and I will be right on hand to watch you. <laughs> Dixie, won't you even give me a chance to explain? Don't you think you've explained enough? You're going to do exactly what my father wanted you down here for. To help Delahanty take possession of 3,000 acres and 100 head of cattle he never paid for. But my dear lady, Chad's got a good reason for doing it. And if he'd only stop to think at the time of the year it is, you'd get some ideas and why if we... If you'd only stop trying to alibi yourselves, maybe we'd all be a lot happier. Let me tell you both this much. I'm going to pay you back someday and show the world what a pair of double-dealing, low-down, back-biting snakes you two really are. Since that's all I have to say to you, you can get out of here now and not show your faces again till it's time for your roundup. Cherokee, dab a loop on that yearling and haul it over here to the fire. We're all ready to brand. Right you are, Chad. Are you sure this brand design will be all right for you, Mr. Delahanty? Sure, if you say so. It's easy to put on those steers. Oh, it's very little trouble. And the design, a triangle cross, is unusual. You won't find it twice within a thousand miles of here. Chad, this adolescent bovine is not taking too kindly to the idea of branding. Now, who's going to hold and who's going to brand? <laughs> I'd better ear the calf down, Cherokee. You look almost worn out already. Uh, the only reason I look worn out is I am worn out. Did you ever see a branding before, Mr. Delahanty? No, this is my first. 
Chad, for mercy's sake, will you stop conversing and toss that calf? The iron is red hot. Okay, Cherokee. And don't forget the instructions I gave you. Yes, sir. Once over lightly. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, Cherokee, slap on that brand and iron, because once we get this one done, we still got 99 more head that are going to wear the triangle cross. Now, believe me, it was mighty tough work branding 100 steers, but well worth the money Delahanty was supposed to pay us. It was late and dark by the time we'd finished, so we arranged to have Delahanty come back the next morning to cut out his cattle and drive them over to his own acres. But just before Delahanty was due, Cherokee and I paid another call on Dixie Baldwin. Are you crazy? Why should I go out to the corral while you gloat over delivering a hundred head of stolen cattle to Delahanty? Now look, young lady, you're coming out to witness the delivery whether you want to or not. So make up your mind to that. Who do you think you're talking to that way? I know who I'm talking to. Miss Dixie Baldwin. And she's going out to make sure that Della Handy gets only the cattle wearing his own brand. You can talk all you want to. I'm not going out to the corral. Now the heck you're not, young lady. Cherokee, grab her shoulder. <laughs> Delighted, my boy. <laughs> Now, we're carrying Miss Baldwin to the corral ourselves. Here goes. Put me down. No, you stop it. You put me down. No, you leave me alone. Well, Mr. Delahanty, it's up to you to pick out the cattle wearing your triangle cross brand and... Dry them out of here. Huh? Triangle Cross brand. That's your brand, you know. Why, why not one of these cattle are wearing a Triangle Cross? <laughs> but they're the same cattle you saw Chad and I brand for you yesterday. What are you talking about? Not your cattle. These have got to be your cattle. You left that so-called assistant of yours here uh, to watch them overnight, didn't you? We're not magicians, Mr. Delahanty. I don't know what's going on. There must be some mistake. <laughs> mistake? Oh, there can't possibly be. And what's more, you yourself gave Miss Baldwin a receipt for the hundred head of cattle right after the branding. Yeah, but... But these aren't my cattle. Well, I must admit the hundred head penned up in here are wearing the two bar S brand. Maybe you moved your cattle during the night while we weren't around. You think I'm crazy or something? <laughs> I'm sure I don't know. But since you admit these aren't your cattle here, uh, well, you might just as well be on your way. Why, you... Remington, I don't know how you did it. But you tricked me. I did? And let me tell you this much. You're not going to get away with it. But maybe I have gotten away with it, Delahanty. It seems to me that you've already signed a receipt for the delivery of your so-called cattle. Yeah? I'm taking the cattle in this corral anyhow. Pry! Yeah, boy. Start driving that hundred head out of here. My good man, do you intimate that you're going to rustle Miss Baldwin's cattle? I mean that you're both a couple of thieves. And I'm taking what's rightly mine. Della Handy, you just made a couple of mistakes. The first mistake was calling me a thief. And the second was... Chad, look out! <laughs> Go get him, counselor! Try to steal cattle, will you? <laughs> I mean, then you're nothing but a filthy crook, and I... And that's one sentence you're not going to finish. When you wake up, we've got another sentence you can finish, which will run about 15 years. All right, Sheriff, you can come out of those bushes now. All right, come on, Sheriff. You saw Delahanty try to take a hundred head of cattle that weren't wearing his brand. And I know that you know exactly what to do with cattle rustlers. Apologize to you for all I said and oh, did. 
You sure don't have to, Dixie. But will you please explain to me how you got away with that hocus-pocus when I saw you brand the cattle with Delahanty's brand myself? <laughs> Miss, all we did was cold brand that stock. <laughs> huh? Cold brand? Now, just what is a cold brand? Well, Dixie, I tried to explain it to you yesterday, but you just wouldn't listen. <laughs> However, a cold brand is a brand which only burns the hair off, doesn't touch the hide. And Della Handy, being an Easterner, didn't know that this time of the year, with the cattle shedding their hair, the burned hair fell out overnight, leaving only the two bar S to show through. <laughs> and the look on his face when he saw that two bar S. Yeah, that two bar is a wonderful brand. Just imagine, two bars in place of one. What do you mean, Cherokee? Well, uh, Cherokee's uh, kind of hinting that now that the job's all over and Della Handy's on his way to jail... He'd like a little uh, liquid refreshment. Oh, well, come on. I've got a bottle of something in the kitchen. Oh, no, not that. Oh, what's the matter, Cherokee? You turning down a drink? Well, <laughs> last night I got into the kitchen and brought the bottle out. Started to pour a drink in the parlor, but I very quickly gave it up. Too strong for me. Too strong? Uh, you'll have to explain that one to me. Well, when I poured some in the glass, a few drops of it fell on the maple table in the parlor. Yes. <laughs> and that liquor was so strong, you know what? The bird's eye maple all turned bloodshot. <laughs> <laughs> Frontier Town, starring Reed Hadley and featuring Wade Crosby as a Bruce Ells production. Story and direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again same time next week for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Reed Hadley. And now this is Bill Foreman to tell you that Frontier Town comes to you from Hollywood. <laughs>